Now our replacement master cylinder is right here. Now before we can install this on a vehicle, it's going to have to be bled. You want to get all the air out of the system. And it's pretty easy to see how it works. There's the plunger right here. Well, right now, naturally, we don't have any fluid coming out because it's empty. Something else to, to keep in mind, too, whenever you add fluid to the system is to identify what type of fluid it uses. Uh, on our case here, it says dot three, four fluid. So that's the type of fluid that would go into this. Now, before we can install this naturally, we have to bleed it. In order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and move the cap off the reservoir. Uh, this has a filter, which is a nice uh, addition to this style master cylinder. It actually stops debris from getting into the valve mechanism of the master cylinder. We'll take that out of the way. Now what I want to do is I want to clamp the flange of this onto a vise and how this is going to bleed out is fairly simple. As a matter of fact, this master cylinder even came with a bleed kit. You're going to have to have one of these if it doesn't come with your master cylinder. This has two tubes right here and has the fittings required to hook into the ports of the master cylinder. There'll be a fitting going each port. The tubes are both going to go into the reservoir and how this works, I'm going to fill the reservoir with fluid about halfway full so we don't spill it and I'm going to operate the plunger on the master cylinder and as I push it all the way in and I release it, bubbles are going to come that are trapped in the master cylinder are going to come through the fluid into the reservoir. I want to repeat this process until both ports on the master cylinder show just straight fluid and no bubbles. So what I want to do is go ahead and secure this into a vise. Now when you place the master cylinder and the vise or holding fixture, what you want to do, you want to have the reservoir, here we are, placed fairly straight up and down. That's the way it's going to be on the vehicle, so that's the way that you want to bleed the system. If you had it cocked one way or the other, there's a good chance you're still going to have air trapped within the master cylinder. Okay, I've got the master cylinder secured in the vise. Now we're going to be using brake fluid, so you need to make sure you have safety glasses on. Okay, the next step now, go ahead and open our bleeder kit. This is pretty easy how to assemble this. What we have, we have the two hoses, we've got a clip, and we've got our two fittings. So that's where I'm going to use the hoses. And the way this attaches, you put the hoses on the adapters. So you want to make sure you get over the first barb, at least. Okay, now the last step is, we want to take both hoses and put them through our clip. There we are. So we're ready to install it onto the master cylinder. Now what we do is we screw both fittings into the ports of the master cylinder. Just screw the fittings in hand tight. Okay, now we're installed into the ports. Now, the clip. What's handy about the clip, in our case, we have a boss inside of the master cylinder. It's right down in the center bottom of the master cylinder. That's going to help hold the hoses in place. If the hoses were allowed to come out of the fluid, what would happen is you would actually suck air back into the master cylinder again. You have to start the procedure all over again. Okay, now that's what the kit should look like in this application. That's totally installed. The next step now is to go ahead and add our brake fluid. Now, we only want to fill the reservoir about halfway full, so when we're doing our bleed process, we're not going to make a big mess and spill us all over. But you also want to maintain your level as well. You don't want to ever get it down to the, very, the point that it's down below the hoses, because then if you do, you're going to have to repeat the process. Something else, too, make sure that you... The brake fluid that you're using, if you have an open container, let's say that you take it off the shelf and the cap's been off for any length of time, don't use it. Discard it. Brake fluid has the ability to uh, absorb moisture, and if you introduce that into your brake system, you're going to have uh, additional problems. Okay, we've got it basically ready to go now. Now, the procedure is very simple. All we basically do, well this one has the plunger that's external. Now what I want to do is press the plunger all the way in. First off, we're going to see bubbles coming up through the reservoir. There's no fluid at all in the hoses yet. Now I let off the plunger. You can see the fluid start coming into the ports. You want to push it all the way in. Hold it for just a second and then let it off. And basically just repeat this process until there's no air bubbles visible. Well, as you can see from our bleed tubes, all of our large bubbles are gone, but we still have a series of small bubbles in the fluid. We've basically aerated the fluid. So what we want to do at this point is let's sit here for a couple of minutes, let all the bubbles come up to the top, and then we'll do our final bleed on it.
Okay, that looks good right there. What you basically want to just keep repeating the process until all the air is out of the master cylinder. Because if you don't and you put this on and there's still air trapped in it, you'll have to force all the air from the master cylinder throughout the entire system before you can have all the captured air out of the brake system. So our next step now is going to remove our bleeder. And you can see it's dripping from both ports. Well, remember, you don't want the brake fluid to come into contact with any painted surface. So we'll go ahead and cap up the ports. Remove our bleeder kit. Reinstall our filter. And at this point, I'm just going to leave it at the halfway level until I get it on the car. Reinstall our cap. Well, basically, our master cylinder is ready to be reinstalled on our vehicle. But just keep in mind that your application may require a different type of fluid. The bleed procedure may be a little bit different. So you'd want to consult your repair manual. As with any job, to do it right, you'll need the right tools. The nice thing is that jobs today don't require a large, expensive assortment. Basic hand tools are generally all you'll need. You'll need a shop manual for your specific vehicle, DOT 3 or DOT 4 brake fluid, as recommended by your vehicle manufacturer, brake line wrench, and a drop light. You may also need screwdrivers or pliers to remove some components. Be cautious when working under the hood. If the engine has been running, components will be extremely hot, so be careful what you touch. When lifting a vehicle, never work under it until it has been secured with wheel blocks and securely positioned on jack stands. A hydraulic jack alone is never enough. Be cautious when working with oils and chemicals. Many are damaging to the groundwater environment and toxic to people and animals. Never drain or pour chemicals into the ground or sewer systems. Local municipalities and counties offer resources for proper disposal. And always remember to wear your safety glasses. Get the entire DVD for this repair and all other procedures covered in the complete car care series at your local AutoZone store.